After much anticipation, Flight 8 finally took place, delivering results that were both expected and surprising. The spotlight quickly turned to the issues with S-34 drawing significant attention. At the same time, the FAA made official announcements regarding the flight, raising questions about its impact on SpaceX's future plans for Starship. So how has the FAA responded, and what does this mean for the road ahead? Let's dive into it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. After a month and a half of anticipation, Flight 8 finally took to the skies, carrying immense expectations from the aerospace industry. Once again, SpaceX delivered an impressive feat with Super Heavy, successfully recovering the third Starship booster using the Mechazilla Arms catching method. This achievement further solidified the foundation for full reusability. However, the issues with the ship remained unresolved, closely mirroring those of Flight 7. Just minutes into the flight, one vacuum engine failed, followed by three C-level engines, causing an imbalance in thrust and leading to a loss of control. Footage from the engine compartment showed small fires on two Raptor vacuums, with the C-level engines displayed unusual airflow, indicating a potential leak. As a result, Starship once again met a fiery end in a moment reminiscent of Flight 7. This time, the explosion appeared to occur closer to shore, as it was visible from Cape Canaveral, the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Given the flight path, it is likely that debris drifted into these areas as well. It's also worth noting that although the booster landed successfully, some issues were observed in its engines. While these did not lead to immediate failure, there is no guarantee they won't cause more significant problems in future flights. Following the flight, the FAA quickly responded with an official statement. The FAA is requiring SpaceX to perform a mishap investigation into the loss of the Starship vehicle during launch operations on the 6th of March. During the event, the FAA activated a debris response area and briefly slowed aircraft outside the area where space vehicle debris was falling or stopped aircraft at their departure location. This means SpaceX must now conduct another investigation similar to previous ones to determine the root cause of the failure. In an update on X, SpaceX confirmed, During Starship's ascent burn, the vehicle experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly and contact was lost. Our team immediately began coordination with safety officials to implement pre-planned contingency responses. We will review the data from today's flight test to better understand the root cause. Additionally, SpaceX stated, we will conduct a thorough investigation in coordination with the FAA and implement corrective actions to make improvements on future Starship flight tests. Beyond determining the cause of the failure, SpaceX will need to collaborate with the FAA and other relevant agencies to assess the impact of falling debris. This includes working with local authorities in affected areas to evaluate potential damage and ensure public safety. Once these assessments are complete, corrective actions must be taken. For the vehicle itself, SpaceX must implement design upgrades to prevent similar failures in future flights. For the affected regions, the company must swiftly recover debris, address any damages, and take the necessary steps to mitigate risks. Only once these measures are completed will the FAA grant approval for the next flight. Looking at the situation from two perspectives, there are both concerns and reasons for optimism. On the downside, the problems from Flight 7 resurfaced in Flight 8, suggesting that SpaceX's upgrades were not entirely effective. The recurrence of these failures may indicate deeper design flaws, which could take longer to address. Additionally, the proximity of the explosion to populated areas may result in a more complex investigation, potentially delaying future launches. Furthermore, SpaceX now faces two mishap investigations simultaneously. The need to resolve both could slow down the overall Starship development timeline. On the upside, the investigation may proceed quickly. So far, no damage from falling debris has been reported. The FAA also indicated in its statement that this information is preliminary and subject to change, and confirmed that normal operations have resumed. Additionally, because the issue is similar to Flight 7, the investigation may be expedited. SpaceX has already implemented several upgrades and can now refine them further. Another positive aspect is that the Flight 9 mission remains unchanged. Since SpaceX still plans to land the ship in the ocean rather than attempting a launch, no modifications to the existing launch license are needed. This allows the company to focus on addressing technical issues rather than regulatory hurdles. Importantly, the FAA has streamlined its approval processes in recent months, which could further speed up the review and approval timeline. If all goes well, the investigation, issue resolution, and regulatory approvals could be completed within a month, allowing Flight 9 to launch as early as April.
However, regulatory approval is only one piece of the puzzle. SpaceX must also ensure the readiness of both the vehicle and the launch infrastructure. Fortunately, Flight 9's booster and ship are already completed and undergoing testing, and the launch system has been refurbished quickly after previous flights. This suggests that pending FAA approval, SpaceX could proceed with the next launch without significant delays. Looking beyond Flight 9, the next major milestone will be Flight 10, which is expected to include an attempt to catch the ship with the Mechazilla arms. While it is disappointing that this test is being pushed back, the additional time allows SpaceX to further refine Tower B in preparation for the catch. A successful catch on the first attempt would be a groundbreaking achievement, and the extra preparation time increases the likelihood of success. Despite the setbacks, SpaceX remains optimistic. In two updates on X, the company emphasized, success comes from what we learn, and today's flights will offer additional lessons to improve Starship's reliability. John Edwards, SpaceX's vice president of Falcon launch vehicles added, never give up. After Falcon 1 Flight 3, we learned the hard way that the night is darkest just before the dawn. Keep your head up, keep pushing, we're gonna get there. This highlights SpaceX's unwavering commitment to its philosophy of continuous learning and iterative improvement. Each failure provides valuable insights that bring Starship closer to full operational capability. Of course, challenges remain on the path to full reusability, but now is the time to support SpaceX's efforts. In times like these, the team benefits from encouragement from aerospace enthusiasts like us. So if you believe in their mission, respond with keep on going in the comment section to show your support. And while SpaceX has faced setbacks, it also has made remarkable progress. So far this year, the company has conducted two Starship test flights and successfully landed Super Heavy twice in a row. Speaking of milestones, our team is also working toward one, reaching 200k subscribers. Achieving this goal requires us to work harder and provide even better content, but your support is crucial in making it happen. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest SpaceX developments. Together, we'll continue following this exciting journey toward the future of space exploration. Thank you so much for your support. Meanwhile, on NASA's end, the Artemis program has been at the center of intense debate, particularly as the United States and China compete for dominance in lunar exploration. Critics argue that Artemis faces numerous challenges, and this was a key focus of a recent hearing held by the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology's Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee on February 26th. The hearing, titled Step by Step, The Artemis Program and NASA's Path to Human Exploration of the Moon, Mars, and Beyond, featured space policy experts Dr. Scott Pace, director of the Space Policy Institute at George Washington University, and Dan Dumbacher, adjunct professor at Purdue University. During the hearing, both experts raised concerns about the pace and execution of Artemis. Dumbacher expressed alarm over the growing competition from China, stating, Our global competitors, primarily China and its allies, are outplanning and outpacing us in their drive to become dominant in space. This is a critical national security and economic concern. His statement underscores the urgency for the U.S. to maintain its leadership in lunar exploration, particularly as China aggressively advances its own lunar ambitions. Scott Pace, meanwhile, called for a reassessment of NASA's approach, suggesting that the agency should consider alternatives for getting astronauts to the moon and back. He argued, Ideally, NASA should be able to buy heavy lift services to send payloads to the moon. A revised Artemis campaign plan should be a high priority for the new administrator. This statement hints at a potential shift in strategy, possibly moving away from NASA's traditional reliance on the space launch system and considering more cost-effective, commercially available solutions. Pace also emphasized that simply reaching the moon first is not enough. Sustainability must be a priority, he explained. I would say the immediate campaign plan, if you will, for the next several missions uh, is going to be important to get there to ahead of the Chinese. And then we need to be able to think, and how are we going to stay there in a way that's sustainable and affordable. His remarks highlight a growing consensus that Artemis must transition from a series of one-off missions to a long-term, repeatable presence on the lunar surface. Both Pace and Dumbacher also discussed the role of SLS and Starship in Artemis. 
Dumbacher expressed skepticism about Starship's readiness, arguing that the number of successful Starship launches need to demonstrate its reliability, making landing humans on the moon by 2030 remote at best. This suggests that NASA may need to rethink its reliance on Starship HLS or introduce contingency plans to avoid delays. The hearing also highlighted NASA's bureaucratic inefficiencies, with discussions on cutting waste, streamlining processes, and fostering a risk-tolerant culture to accelerate Artemis. As 2025 progresses, NASA must refine its approach, maintaining Starship HLS while reducing delays and costs. Should Artemis undergo major changes or stay the course? This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.